you know, they're the names that I want the people in that list to be able to say, you know, I was one of them legends of that era. I don't want to say, oh, this is me last year, but if I can get the fights that I want, then this will probably be, be me last year in boxing. For me, it was fine. I was with my mum. I thought, chilling, watching the awards, I thought she was doing the same. That much to say, just say it. A little bit immature and a little bit childish. You were running to Mauricio Sullivan, or your team was, asking to be mandated to fight your, your, your mandatory, which was standards. That's what you did. That's what Mauricio, I was on a, a Zoom call the week after the fight with Mauricio and the Smith. And that's what he said happened. Get on with your career. I had to get on with mine when like, you avoided me for two years. This is Rigo here for No Smoke Sport with multiple weight champion Tasha Jonas, a legend, by the way, guys, uh, within female boxing and just boxing in general. Tasha, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the good introduction. You know, you have a massive fight coming up. Uh, the last time, obviously, we, you know, I interviewed you, you, you know, you, you said some things that I'm going to be asking you about 1 million percent. However, the first thing I want to ask you is how's camp? How's your health? How, how, uh, how is everything? It's good. Yeah. It's been, I can say camps in, in December at the end of the year, you know, people are finishing. They don't want to really start until the January um, there's lots of bugs going around because it's cold and I've got the baby in school and she's like a little germ factory as it is. Yeah, so it's it's camps camps in December are different, um, which is why I tried to get it before the the Christmas break. But you know, it is what it is, um, and we've we've done with what we've got. You know, we've got still got some of the the best amateurs and and, and pros um, sparring. You know, we've got Cindy and Gamba. Um, uh, Bree Wright. Um, we've got some other GB girls coming up this week, um, and we have uh, yeah had a host of of other people. So it's been a great camp. We've had um, Dakota as well, who's just pre recently won at the, the the PFL tournament. So we're not short of a spot, a good sparring partner, and as uh, we think we've got with them every every base covered for Michaela. So now, just obviously, all right. Let's just jump straight into it since you are. Uh, Michaela Mayer. Now she's she's having a massive jump to come and fight you, Tasha. I believe her last contested fight was at 135 pounds, 130, somewhere there. Um, I believe she's coming maybe two weight divisions up to 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 fight you. How did the fight kind of? How, how did it kind of happen? Um, I just think you know she's gone to the same the same people. Um. She's gone for the same opportunities that I have. When I was trying to, I didn't want to wait around. You know, Chantel was fighting Katie. We knew that was going to be a two-fight deal. Uh, McCaskill was think was fighting Sandy. We knew that was going to. Well, we thought that would be a two-fight deal. Um, and then I can't remember. I, I can't remember where the others were, but everyone was in a fight, and I didn't want to keep waiting. So it, mm -hmm. you know, the idea was to jump up and then you know get something because. Before before I had the world title, I was like a lot of risk for no reward, and 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 people you know can you know go around you and go go every which way than to fight you. So you have to put you either have to put yourself in mandatory positions so they can't avoid you, or you know you you have to give them something in return. And when when I when I finally had that belt, then people had there was something there for people to want to risk it, um, and that's exactly what Michaela Michaela's done. She's she she realizes that you know people are all tied up where she wants to be, um. So the 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 idea is to jump up and up and you know um top rank having the deal with uh boxer and sky, mm -hmm. all sh shown on the same platform it just made sense, um for me I, I've said for for ages you know now I, I uh, it's probably you know we're, we're coming towards the end of my career within within boxing, um and I want the big fights and when I look at you know the Taylors and and uh, the Serranos and the Chantal Camerons of the world. And, you know, they're, they're going to be pound for pound legends of our era uh, because they've beaten people in that pound for pound list. Um, and, and that's what I want to do. And Michaela's in that list. I'm not sure if she is now, but she was ahead of me in the list. So, you know, they're the names that I want the people in that list to be able to say, you know, I was one of them legends of that era. Coming back down to 147, obviously there was kind of a thing where, uh, you know, it is a common thesis in the sense of you you move up and then you move back down. 
Um, will she have the same power? Will she be the same? But you have shown all of that ability. How do you feel at 147 pounds? When I was weight, when I was boxing at the uh, 154 limit, I was never, I never weighed in above 149, and that was with me clothes I know. on. Yeah, so at 147, <laughs> very comfortable. Um, it's, it's, it's probably a bit more natural. It definitely is more natural than anything like super feather or anything like that. You know, mm -hmm. I, I I agree with Michaela when she when she was saying, you know, when you move, make that move up, you realize how much she was taking out yourself to make that lower weight, and that's how I feel now. I feel like I'm energized. I spend my camp now working on technical stuff more than working on making a weight, and I think that that brings a whole different light to a camp and it puts a camp in a whole different perspective when weight is not the worry and it's not the issue. So I, you know, fitness, yes, is, 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 you know, you work on that at the start, but then a lot of it is, is now working on my opponents only. So that I think I approach camps differently knowing that because I'm not worried about making a weight and how heavy I'm going to be and how much I've got to get off the, the week before and all that. I'm, I'm just, I'm just in camp working on, working on my opponents. Well, Michaela's quite, also, I was, I've always been surprised in terms of the weight that Michaela uh, has been. Have you been studying her and her last three, four bouts and, and you know, what, within camp, like that type of thing? Yeah, you always, like, myself, Joe, he'll go away and watch and see what he sees. I go away and watch and see what I see and we come together and, you know, we, we work on things and we, we try them with the... Um, sparring partners that we get sometimes it'll work sometimes it won't we'll come up with a different plan uh, you know I'll always throw in you know the the careful what if they do this what if they do that because I, I, I do I, I overthink a lot um, and I, 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 I'm in like I'm very regimented in like I need to know what I'm what I like what, what I'm to do I like, I like to know what I'm to do and then I follow the plan so um so I've got like a, a thing for every everything that she she can do and every outcome that I believe that she can do, then we have a we have a um a response for. I know you're not going to tell me the game yeah, plan. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not going to tell me the game plan. Have you brought people in um with the type of build and and you know obviously analyzing her last fights? Have you is, is that how you've prepared? Yeah, like each one of the sparring partners, we choose carefully and for a reason, specific reason. Um, so, I'll, yeah, mo I think all of them are, are that little bit taller than me um, for for that punching up kind of, you know, range of motion in, in, in your shots. Um, but we've got one for work rate. We've got one for, you know, um, like I say, just getting the shots off that we want. Um, we've got one for big, hard, heavy shots. We've, we, you know, like I say, we've got, We've got the bases covered for for what we think she'll bring, um, and the sparring partners are chosen for that reason. Now, Tasha, um, and you made me sad this lot that last interview. I'm not gonna lie, because you said to me that you have maybe two fights at best left. Um, is is that still the case? I think you know um, we're probably looking the last year. Of me boxing, oh, I don't like to say that. Uh, I don't think I've ever said the last year. Yeah, no, it's yeah. just that you know, things like I, I, I intended on last year having three fights and maybe looking assessing me situation then, but then I didn't get the, th I didn't get three fights. I got one, so that and that changed the I the plan for last year. So I don't want to say, oh, this is me last year. But if I can get the fights that I want, then this will probably be be my last year in boxing. Okay. Uh... Sorry. Well, <laughs> it's it's, it's uh, don't apologize to me. Uh, apologize to future generations. I know that you don't want to look um, past your current opponent, and that's absolutely fine. However, I still have to ask you the question: What you know? You said to me in the last interview that you wanted the winner of Cameron and Taylor. Is that still the case? I would definitely love to be in the conversation, but if I don't win then that conversation's quickly no longer on the table. So, uh, yeah, I just focus on the fight that's in front of me and winning that and then keeping all the doors open because we know in boxing that one loss and they quickly all shut. Do you still see a potential fight with Terry Harper in 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 your year plan? 
Uh, no, not particularly, to be honest. <laughs> I've seen that as oh. some of the questions that people were putting out. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had... As soon as I said that I was going to interview today, you and maybe one other person are the only ones where the comments and my DMs, I'm like, oh my God, okay, I need to kind of shut this this down quite quickly. <laughs> um, but I, I've got a couple of questions for the fans, but it, how was it? Because um, obviously you just said you don't see a fight um, in the future with Terry, but how was it at that award show? Um, for me, it was fine. I was with my mom. I thought chilling, watching the awards, I thought she was doing the same. And obviously she wasn't, so um, I just think it's like a little bit immature and a little bit childish. Like we said our lows and then, you know, the compare was getting everybody ready for what he wants us to do when, the, you know, the, 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 mu the music starts and how to cheer, how to clap. So I was just listening to his instructions and, you know, she had a lot to say on socials afterwards, but didn't have anything to say when she was sitting. A lot to say, Tasha. I was the one that she, she, she gave the whole... Hey, exactly. Like... <laughs> so if you, if you that much to say, just say it. I'm like, I was there. I didn't have any. She said, "Well, you weren't speaking to me. I didn't have anything to say to you. I've got something to say. I'll say it." But I didn't. Like, I'm not. I'm not into being two faced and into, you know, uh, you know, I sit next to Terry and look at this. I'm not into that. I'm that maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's a generational thing. But I'm I'm just not into that. I'm not gonna sit there and pretend to be all something I'm not again towards someone that like. I don't really care about Terry, like, you know, I'll, I'll never wish a bad or, like, you know, you get on with your career. I had to get on with mine when, you, like, you avoided me for two years. So now that I'm, like, in a, in a different position and you, you kind of need me, now you want to scream my name, but you went missing for two years. Where was she then? Where was she when the fans, where was all, where was the fans when the fans were calling out for it, the instant rematch? You were running to Mauricio Solomon or your team was asking to be mandated to fight your, your your mandatory, which was standards. That's what you did. That's what Mauricio, I was on a, a Zoom call the week after the fight with Mauricio mm -hmm. and the Smith, and that's what he said happened. So, you know, uh, whether she knows that or not, whether that was her team or whatever, but you, you, you chose a different way. So now I'm in the position where I don't have to choose you. I'm not going to do you any favours. So that's why the Terry fight will never happen. Plus, like I say, I'm, I've got, you know, two or three fights left in me this year. And for me, she's just not on the list. She's just she's just not where I want to be and where I need to be. You know, I think for me, the Taylor fight's bigger. I think for me, the Cameron fight would be bigger. And I think for, for a McCaskill fight would be bigger in the sense for me, that the only belt I haven't got is a WBA. So I'd like to complete the set and get a WBA. So for me, the McCaskill fight makes more sense. You know, like I say, Taylor fights bigger, Cameron fights bigger. So she doesn't, and, and, and the Michaela Mayer fight is well bigger. So she doesn't enter the, the, the scope for me. There's other options that I think personally for me are better. So I'm not going to choose her just because she wants me to choose her. It doesn't make sense for me. But you said Cameron there. Would you drop down to 140 to fight her? I said, I'm only in 147 for the same reason Michaela Meyer is, for the opportunity mm -hmm. that's there. There was belts that were there that became available that we could fight for, so I fought for it and got it. Um, when when that opportunity arises to jump back down, um, again, I will do, because that's that's where I want to be. I, I want to be with the between 130, 135, sorry, and 147. That's probably the best weights in boxing for me. I'll never, I'll never get to one. I'll never get to super feather ever again. Um, maybe oh, yeah. someone a bit higher at one five four. Maybe if uh, I, I think uh, like an opportunity makes sense. But if it doesn't make sense, I won't go there. There's the, they're the weights for me right now. So you know, to drop back down has, has always been in the plan. It's never been to stay at one four seven. It was just because that opportunity was there. Got a couple of uh, questions from the fans. I did promise them that I would ask you. Uh, well, I, I think I've covered it in, in most of the interview. However, uh, what do you think about uh, the calls uh, for a transition of three-minute rounds in, in, in women's boxing? Um, I think three minutes personally suits myself better. Um, I train three minutes. The only time I go down to two minutes is like now when I'm preparing for a fight because fights are two minutes. 
Um, for there's there's yeah, for me for me personally, I think three minutes is is a good thing. But then it brings it open it opens a whole floodgates of you know, okay, if we're gonna do more, are we gonna get paid more? And if mm. if no is the answer, then why would I do more work to not get paid for more? Like it it doesn't make sense. I'm in the ring fighting for 20, 30 minutes, <clears throat> or or you know thirty six minutes, whatever it is. Um, it doesn't make sense to 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 have thirty more minutes and and still be on the same pay. It doesn't it doesn't no no one would ask anyone, you know, outside of boxing, it, it, you know, doing an hour and a half overtime. And 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 you just, but you're not going to get any extra pay for it. We just just do it after because we want you to do it. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, just two questions for myself. Thank you so much, Tasha, for your time. First question being, um, and obviously just moving away from the women's division for a minute. Uh, Anthony Joshua is going to be fighting Francis Ngannou, um, in the Great Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, courtesy of His Excellency Turkey Al Al Sheikh. How? Who? What? Who do you think will win and their keys to victory? Listen, I was convinced Tyson would absolutely smash him the first time. I was one of them, you know, given the MMA guys in the gym hell, saying, you know, doesn't he hasn't got a chance. He might be good at MMA, but you know, he might be good at stand up, he might have a good shot, but you know, this is boxing. And I had to hide and not go to the gym for two weeks after it <laughs> because, of, you know, <laughs> because of how it worked out. So, yeah, um, I, I I genuinely do think, um, you know, Tyson didn't expect him to be that good. I, 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 he was in, you know, halfway through a training camp for Usyk and kind of overlooked what Ngarnu would bring. I don't think Joshua would do that. He's got a full training camp mm-hmm. to fight. And, it, um, you know, It'll, it'll get the fight will get a lot of stick because you know one because Eddie gave Frank a load for saying you know Tyson Fury's fighting this one you know you Eddie 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 can't help himself can he Yeah, yeah so he always contradicts himself and then when when the, when the when the money's on the table and it's his fight it's different um so the fight's gonna get a load of stick for that anyway um but when it comes to a comparison I think it's one of them things that actually may work well in Joshua's favor in the sense of you know, he will kind of do to him what Tyson Fury should have. Well, let, let yeah, that's what we that's what we're hoping that he will put that, you know, put that to bed and be like, yeah, we told you, we told you, MMA guys, boxing is different. You know, <laughs> you're gonna mean? be in the gym on Monday, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I told you, I told you, so yeah, and then I'll be back in the gym, proud, chest out, and all that. So yeah, um, so yeah, I think it, it, the fight will get stick just because of what it is, but I think. Um, and and who it is and what people have said in the past and how it's been approached and whatever, but I, I do think when people love a com- a comparison, like that's that's probably why you see you know especially on the female circuit when there's there's so little of us to choose from that we probably will all fight the same people because people want to see how that one did against that one and it doesn't necessarily mean anything because. You know, styles make fights and, and people fight different depending on whatever. So it doesn't necessarily mean something, but for, for the maybe the a little bit more casual fans and um, that people like to be able to compare because it's easy to say, well, she beat Absolutely. that one like that way. And, and, and you know, she only drew or she lost and what, whatever it is. But it, it, it's a good comparison for them in their head to have. So I think, yeah, I think it's for, for that sense. Um, it'll be a good fight for AJ. Um, I would prefer... Uh, a, a Zhang, or because he's just come off uh, a lefty camp or a Horovic. Um, but you know, like I say, it is boxing is what it is, and people will go where the money is and 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 do what you know, whatever whatever's wanted in the game. And you know, when uh, when the shakes are um, putting all the biggest shows on and and you know putting the money where the mouth is, I think you'd be stupid as a fighter. We are prize fighters. We fight for money. That's you'd be stupid to not go where the money is. Um, and just the last question, a little bit of a controversial one. Um, do I have to warn you? So um, I know that you've obviously seen um, in in obviously America they have allowed um, bouts between transsexual women and women. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that, Tasha? God, it's it's a hotbed at the minute. 
Um, this is a, a thing that is, is not new to female boxing, if I'm honest. I remember being in, I think it was a World Championships, maybe in 2010. Mm-hmm. And I know it was definitely before the Olympic one that we had a, a, a now female who had tran- a, a male who had transitioned to a female fighting in one of the lower weight categories who was a, a junior Olympic champion. My God. And he trans- transitioned to a woman. And, and to be fair, he did, he did, or she did get beat in, in our tournament, but that wasn't the point. Um, I do think. You know, I, I I think boxing should be for everyone. There shouldn't be no barriers to be to, to box if you want to. But I also think it has to be fair. And you are like we've seen in, in other sports, we're not crossing a line. We're not, you know, touching a wall first or you know, throwing the furthest or whatever it is. We're not doing that. We're mm-hmm. intentionally punching and trying to hurt our opponents. And we've seen in, in previous combat sports like the UFC people's being fracturing skulls. And, you know, there is, if you've, I, I'm no, like, I, I am no doctor, but from from what I understand of transitioning, that if you've already been through puberty, then you've already got the, the benefits of being male and, and mm-hmm. all the benefits that come with that, like your, you know, your muscle, whatever it is. So if you've gone through that stage already, then it doesn't really matter what, you put in place uh, about having, you know, this for four years and this for two years and this, you've already got them. Um, I don't know what the word is. You've already got them. Testosterone. Like, yeah. You've everything. Already got them benefits of, 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 of that's, that's more than a female ever could. And then you, you get into the slippery slope of, you know, I've seen it in the weightlifting and all female records are being broken by, uh, I think it's an Australian athlete who, who now, you know, these records have stood for like tens of years and now they're all being broken by this one trans athlete and it's combining kind of everything that we've previously gone through, stood through barriers that we broke down to even get there and it's undermining like who we are and what 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 we are um, and what we stand for. Like you're potentially taking it, you know, from we're potentially taking glory from from a born female, which I don't think is fair, and the opportunity from other born females, you know, by you know selection or whatever, and, and I just don't think it's fair. Um, I think the WBC, um, I think I've done a good thing by introducing um, a transgender um, division. Yeah, division. Absolutely. Yeah. So so that that makes it a whole lot fairer because then you've got people who are on the same, you know kind of yeah biological um i don't i don't have to show it's so hard to, to say without it offending someone come to the point where you either you don't compete as a female because you're competing against a born male so mm-hmm. then you're going to lose your space anyway or you compete and potentially get beat and lose your space so either way it feels like we could be losing either way whether you stand up and take the stance and say right i'm not competing then you've lost mm-hmm. anyway or you take the chance and you lose and you've lost anyway. And it's just you there's just no win for us as a as born female. So like like I said, I do believe that, that sport should be for everyone. And maybe it's time now that sport changes as a whole and, and does introduce these categories. If that's the way the world is and that's how we that's how it, it's gonna be, then fine, let's 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 introduce the categories and, and let's Let's get these people involved in sport because we it shouldn't be but it shouldn't be a barrier, but at the same time, it has to be fair. Absolutely, Sasha. However, thank you so much, Champ. I always appreciate your time. The floor is yours. Anything that you want to say to your fans or or supporters or or anything, anything, Tash? No, it's just the same as always. You know, thanks for the support. Hope you I, I hope you've had a good Christmas. All the best for the new year. Hope it's full with love and happiness and, you know, everything everything that you want and more in abundance. And, yes, yeah, stay tuned. Um, this, is, this is the chapter, the final chapter, and, and we're going for it.